Today I'm going to show you how I installed a NEMA 1450 charging outlet for charging my Tesla Model 3. Throughout the video, I'll show you all the steps that you're going to have to do and all the material that you'll need to do exactly the same thing. So if you're a little bit handy and you want to take on the job yourself, um, I would just ask two things of you. Number one, please make sure you take out a permit. It's only to your benefit. And number two, if you enjoy the video, please do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. In the next couple days, I'm going to upload uh, a bunch of videos on the Tesla Model 3 and more specifically the little known features of the Model 3 so that I can help you get uh, the most out of your Model 3. So if you're ready for it, let's go. Now I've read through the instructions that Tesla provided and they're very specific about what components are going into it and we're going to follow it to a T. All right? So the first thing they ask for is a 50 amp breaker right there, a NEMA 1450 outlet with the ground up rated for 50 amps or higher and six gauge wire six gauge wire is what they call for six gauge or uh, six gauge or bigger right that's three wire plus ground so we got about 24 feet here i'm going to show you my situation i'm only going about 20 feet from the breaker panel we're going to put the outlet over here and in my situation i'm putting it on a cold wall so I'm not an electrician, right? So I know an electrician would have some really cool uh, drill bits and techniques to actually punch through all of the studs in the wall without having to rip open the sheetrock. My problem is this is a cold wall. There's going to be insulation in there, and I don't know what a large drill bit is going to do. It's probably going to mangle up the insulation, leave little patchy spots in the wall, so I'm not going to do that, right? So to, to greatly simplify it for me, I'm actually going to cut open a one-foot wide section in the wall from the outlet location all the way to the panel. They're both on the same wall. And I'm gonna show you step by step how to install all these components and uh, set up your charging station for your Model 3. So, if you're ready, here we go. So let me show you what I did here. So my goal is to take out this this, uh, this bit of sheetrock here all the way across, but I don't wanna have to buy more sheetrock. I'm actually not that good about cutting sheetrock in the first place. So if I, if I carefully cut out this section of sheetrock, I know how to put it back in. That's not that big a deal. And spackle's not that big a deal either. So what I did was I drew lines right on where the studs are because that's where you wanna make your cuts. You don't wanna make a cut in the sheetrock if it's in between two studs because you're not going to have a place to screw it back in after the fact. So you're going to cut on the studs, right? So I drew each of the sections, right, in between the studs. You can see that all the way across, uh, at, right on the studs rather. And I marked them. I marked them with numbers. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That way, after you take them out, you can just stack them up any which way you want. And when you're done with your project, you'll be able to put the ball back in exactly in the spots where they were. That will be the piece that fits on that part of the wall. So uh, here we go, we're actually going to cut it out now. And also I should add that uh, I intend to put the outlet above my cut because uh, the box that I'm going to put in doesn't really accept the, um, the wire to come through like the side of the box. It has to come through either the bottom or the top. So the goal, uh, my intention is to run the wire this way and then take a, a, a turn upwards through the bottom of the box. Plus you'll have like some room to play with. So really the box is going to go right about there. All right, here we go. I made the horizontal cut going right across, right? The hacksaw made easy work of that. That was no problem. Just make sure that when you're going through the little lines that you made there for the studs, that you're not actually cutting through a stud. You'd be in big trouble if you did that. So uh, 
Well, uh, as you're going through with the uh, with the saw, just make sure that you lift up and you're only plunging in about a you know a half an inch or so through the sheetrock, but not the stud. But then you can plunge back in after you pass the stud. Do the same thing all the way across. All right, we've made all our cuts. So now we're going to go through one by one and pull out each of those panels. You might run into a little trouble because there are probably some nails in between that you haven't accounted for, but don't worry about it. Just pull them right off and a little spackle after the fact will be an easy job for you. Here we go. Well, wouldn't you know it, there is no insulation. I guess the contractor who put this house up only put the, uh, the insulation on, uh, on the outside, you know, that styrofoam insulation. I would hope that if I was inside the house cutting open an open wall, like in my dining room or living room, that there's real insulation in there. In this case, it is just, uh, it's an unheated, unair conditioned garage. The builder, you know, 17 years ago probably figured, what the hell, it's not code, it's cheap out a little bit. Nevertheless, I think the job is gonna be easier. So, uh, all right, let's keep on going. guys so I took the, uh, the the cover off the breaker panel and here's what we got this is exactly as I had hoped it was gonna look like all right so I was gonna drop the 50 amp breaker right here in this area uh, I was gonna punch through the bottom here right we're gonna punch one of these out and run the wire down and over now you saw me put my finger in this panel please please to God do not touch anything in here all right this is the main breaker if you've not already shut this off every one of these hot wires and I'm not sure about the comment, but anyway, please do not touch any of the wires in here while you have the, uh, the, this, this breaker still on. Even if a tool in your hand, you know, maybe you got a kid running around the house uh, who's got some metal thing in their hand and they walk past this panel and bang it in there, people are going to be in trouble, right? Make sure you got that breaker off and if you're going to walk away from this panel, please put the cover back on it. Uh, my situation, um, I bought the wrong breaker, right? So I got a cutler hammer panel. And Home Depot doesn't carry Cutler Hammer, but I looked online to see what other brands might fit in a Cutler Hammer, and I found some place that said that Eaton Breakers fit in there. But looking at this breaker, it does not look like it's going to fit in the slots in here. So I'm going to make a run for the Home Depot, and I'm going to be back. At the same time, this was the original box that I bought that I was going to drop the, uh, the NEMA outlet into. Um, I, I don't think I like it anymore. I wish I had a bigger box because that 6-gauge wire is hard as hell to work with. So I'm going to go and get a bigger box, uh, a new cover. We're going to keep the same NEMA um, outlet, the receptacle. New breaker, of course. Uh, and I should be back in about 15 minutes. See you soon. All right, I'm back. So I got a new breaker, I got a new box, and a new cover. So the idea is this is gonna this is gonna mount to uh, to one of the studs this way. The cover goes right on that, and uh, we'll do the hookup. Should be okay. Onward. <laughs> to do now so we're gonna have to punch through the bottom of the box and it's gonna be a three-quarter inch uh, punch through this box the the half inch that's here is not gonna support the six gauge wire so we're gonna punch through either this one or this one here but I'm thinking this one just to give us a little room uh, so we're gonna come down with the wire and start making our way through now you'll notice that I, I, I drilled through all the studs except for this one right because check it out so the main for the house comes all the way through and comes down over here so I'm blind drilling it to here 
Uh, so I, I didn't drill through. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to drill a little hole through here somewhere. I'm not sure. I'm going to think about it for a sec. Um, and a matter that I can get the sheetrock back on just so I can see what's under there. All right, so let me show you what I did. So I didn't use the saw, right? I used my knife just to cut a little bit of uh, a small square here. It's going to be hard to, to fit that piece back in, but I'll, I'll find a way. There's ways to do it. So I didn't want to cut anything behind there because look what I found, right? The main service for the house is coming right there. Uh, there's also a couple other wires, so that's a good thing we went about it slowly so we didn't cut anything. So here's what we're going to do up here, all right? Let me flip this around. So we got to punch through the box from the bottom up, right? So I have a three-quarter inch Romex connector. These over here are all half inch, right? This one back here is a three-quarter, so that's the one we're going to use, one of these. Um, I'm going to think about it for a second, but we're going to punch one of these from the bottom and that's where the wire is going to come through, uh, through the Romex connector. Very similar to that one right there. Not much different except that one's a half inch. We're going to go with a three quarter inch because it's a pretty thick wire. So here we go. All right, so we have cut the power to the house, right? I put my multimeter to this. I'm getting zero volts across all the terminals, so it's looking pretty good. And uh, also what we did was we punched a hole in the, uh, in the panel. You can see that down there, that's the three quarter and uh, we're going to run the wire through there. First we're going to put a connector and uh, then we're going to run the wire. So I'm going to put you down for a second and show you how we install a new breaker. There's our breaker. installed all right so we're gonna put this in to the off position and we'll run it right through now here we go to get it right through. Uh, nevertheless, we do have it through, and if you can see, I'll try to get in there for you. I put a, a three-quarter inch Romex connector. Uh, it's the snap-in type, so I have to snap it through from the bottom. We pulled the wire through, I stripped back all the sheathing, and uh, unstranded the wire. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take the two uh, the, the, uh, hot leads, right, the black and the red, and we're gonna put them into each pole of this breaker, right? The neutral, the neutral is going to be run along the bottom up to the neutral bus and the ground is going to run up the left hand side to the ground bus. We're going to keep it all nice and tight just like the contractor did the first time when setting this thing up. So here we go. Alright guys, so I paused the video for a little while because once again some of this wire was hard to work with but I put it all in place but let me show you what I did anyway. All right, so you can see our uh, six gauge wire came through here. I ran the neutral up to the neutral bus up here. We found the spot for it, right up there. All right, and our, our red and black, the hot leads, both of them came into each pole of this breaker. We wrapped them up nice and tight along the sides. And uh, oh yeah, the ground, right? We ran the ground all the way up, connected it up here to the ground bus. And that is the default Tesla configuration that they ask you for their mobile charger. So at this point, we can turn the service back on as long as our breaker here is turned off. Because don't forget, all the way down at the other end, we've got a wire where the leads might actually be touching. So we don't wanna mess with that. So let's just make sure this breaker is off. That's on, that's off. All right, so we should be good now if we turn this on. We're gonna flip it on. Think about that for a sec. Yeah, looks good. Boom, lights are back on and we can continue. All right guys, so I moved along a little bit. Um, I kind of changed my mind. Initially I said I was gonna put the box up this high uh, on this side, but I think uh, just judging by the closeness of the wall and everything else, I think it just makes a little more sense to have the mobile connector sit a little bit lower because uh, you know, in the event that I do 
um, decide to put in the wall connector in the future, I could just still use this as a junction box and run a wire up a little higher where the wall connector would make sense. So we're just going to proceed with the box being in this location. Frankly, it was a little bit easier too. And um, we'll go from there. Here we go. to length over here and the ends stripped off. At this point we're going to put a couple of pieces of sheetrock back on the wall because the NEMA 1450 receptacle is going to mount with the, uh, with the cover plate on top of the wall. So it's going to be flush with the wall. Uh, so at this point we're just going to put on a couple of pieces of sheetrock and we can go right, from so there. We've got a couple pieces of sheetrock put back on. We cut the square out with a knife and now we're going to hook up our NEMA 1450 receptacle. All the, uh, all the holes in the back are marked with exactly what they are. This is, uh, that's white, that's going to be your neutral. This is ground, and these are marked X and Y. These are going to be your hot uh, red and black. You can put them in either one, it doesn't matter. Just see that when, when you hook them up, maybe just try to get it in the right position so that the ground is up. Again, we're doing this for a Tesla, and Tesla requires that the ground be up because of the direction that their uh, mobile adapter hooks up, it kind of puts some weight in one direction because it's kind of got an L on it. Uh, so if you do it this way, you're, you'll notice that's always kind of like hanging out and the wire is going to go like up and around. So if you do it with the ground up, the wire will always dangle straight down. This, this mounting cover actually came with kind of like short screws. Um, it was my choice of box back there. It was kind of a weird box. I kind of wish I would have gotten a different one, but it's the, the way that it mounted, it sat in the wall. It wasn't really meant to be mounted flush to the wall. I found no other way to make use of it. So what I had to do is get like longer screws, the, uh, the screws that otherwise would go into the box. Um, the box itself only has a spot for two screws, uh, this one and that one. So you're looking over here wondering why these two are missing. It's just the box only had the two corner screws. You know, it's probably just me being amateur and just picking up the wrong box. Um, but otherwise, all the connections are perfect. It's rock solid. Um, so all that's left now is to punch out the, the little spots on the breaker panel, um, on the cover of the breaker panel, and to put back in a whole bunch of sheetrock. Um, but it was dead simple. You can see over here, the reason we made those cuts over here and over there right on the studs is that so you can find an anchor point for your screws when you put them on. Those are just regular sheetrock screws. So we're gonna do the same thing all the way through. And right now I'll show you how to punch out those, um, uh, those spaces in the breaker box. So hang on. Hey, it just occurred to me that before we tighten the whole thing up and close up the panel, uh, we should test to make sure that we're actually getting 240 out of here. So I did turn on the breaker and it didn't trip so there's no short circuit. So here we go. There it is, Oops. 241 holding. If you put it in the neutral, you should get 120. There we go, 121, 240. So we're good, we can close it all up. hope you enjoyed this video I hope you can make some use of it you know it probably wasn't perfect if you are gonna do this do as I did and please take out a permit um, be safe make sure you got all your breakers turned off whenever you're working on stuff and uh, if you would please subscribe to my channel to support my videos and um, in about a week and a half I should have my model 3 here and you'll be sure to see more videos of that awesome car all right now once we're all done we're gonna we're gonna put the sheetrock back up put a couple coats of spackle and uh, we should be back to normal. All right, so hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe and like the video. Thanks.